Hello everyone and welcome to the Captain on the Bridge podcast, presented by Hyperion Team. I am your host today, Mr. Spaceman, and I am joined by... Nor. Hello! And JK Crafted. Hello there. Today we have a very special topic, two topics actually. The birthday of our favourite little academy headmaster, um, Teresa Apocalypse. And the anniversary of Honkai Impact 3rd's elder sister game, Guns Girls, also known as Hokai Gakuen 2, also known as Zombie Gal Kawaii, also known, uh, you know, it goes on and on. Um, so yeah, uh, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, Noor, you've been on the podcast before. Um, well, I guess I can go first then. Hello, my name is Noor, otherwise known as Noor Anti, and I go ahead and stream the games of Honkai. We're basically all Hoyo Wars games, and I also post little TikToks and videos on YouTube, and I basically over fixate on the smallest parts of lore that relate to literature and so much more. <laughs> and JK? Hi, I'm JK Crafted. I'm one of the heads of Hoyostands. I write a lot of lore things and make stuff work and make sense. Uh, and I am Mr. Spaceman. I was on the podcast two weeks ago. Um, and I am the founder and organizer behind Hoyo Stand. And together with JK, uh, we do a lot of um, digging into law, uh, as well as, of course, with the other members of Hoyo Stands, which are not here today. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to our birthday girl then. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much. Every time when it's her birthday, I make a whole celebration on my streams and everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, love the little Teresa. Love the Teresa. She's like a daughter to me. I spoil her rotten. <laughs> she, I feel like, I feel like her lore is some of the most complicated, hurtful, but also the most human thing possible, in my opinion. That's just me, though. I don't know. I love yeah. her so much. It's very interesting. It is. And then, like, I don't know. It's so funny to me because I realize, like, as someone who streams the game actively and stuff, sometimes people will come into my stream and they were just like, yeah, no, it's kind, it's kind of weird how she's just like, you know, she's just like this. She's she's 40 years old and she looks like this. And now I'm like, well, yeah. You got to play the Chronicle series to understand a little bit more. But Jesus Christ, it's, it's a lot for anyone. <laughs> I... I often forget how young she's actually supposed to look like because well. she has like she's drawn with the same face as colored almost yeah but i mean like that makes sense because you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah an old woman in a young body yeah old woman in a young body oh but it's okay it's okay i i don't know i i love her i love her lore attachment to her i i love all the relations she has with everyone in the cast i i that's my baby! I have almost all her battle suits triple S. Almost all of them. Almost. <laughs> I think the young uh, body old woman thing, I think they strike a very neat balance in the story of presenting Teresa as like... I know, she comes across as though she both tr wants to revel in the fact that she looks young and wants to be spoiled and stuff, like being spoiled by Otto, being like eating the sweets and, and playing with toys. But then also she really wants to be taken seriously. I mean, because, well, she is the head headmistress of a yeah. head, headmistress. Of, uh, of an of the academy. academy. Yeah. And she, and one of the most powerful Valkyries on the planet. <laughs> I mean, like, it's kind of relatable, different. to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, at least for me, because, like, I've been told I look way younger than I actually am. And so, like, for me, I'm like, I understand her pain of, like, I... The funny story, because she is the headmaster and everything. For me, it's funny, because I, I was a teacher aide for a very short time, because I needed to do it for my program for university. 
And every time, the first time I went out to the halls to get some things for the teacher I was assisting, I got pulled aside because one of the security guards thought I was a student and I was just like, oh God. So I had to stay there for 45 minutes explaining that I was a teacher and I had to show like my ID and everything. Go like, no, 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 this is an actual ID. I promise you, I was, I am not a student. I'm an actual teacher aide. So I'm like, I understand where her pain comes from. <laughs> That's a very direct um, <laughs> parallel to the character. She's like the but... same height as me, so I relate to it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, even on a more, like, even when the connection um, a person has with her isn't as direct, like, even if you don't look young and you don't, like, experience what she experiences, that thing that she externalizes does feel very human. Yeah. Like it, it is that idea of like, I want to be taken seriously. I want to be treated as an adult, but I also want to have that sense of security, that sense of like childlike wonder. And I think she exemplifies those sides really well with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she shows the duality of the two worlds very well, of adulthood and childhood, and the differences, but also how they are the same in a way, and how they go together. Uh, I, I think that also kind of shines through throughout her different versions. Oh yeah, for sure, for oh, sure. Yeah. I feel like each version of her is just like, it shows a lot of, like, about her and everything, not even just like between like Honkai but also GCC, but like in Honkai in particular, when you notice like Luna, we're just gonna bring up Luna quickly, you can kind of see a little bit more of that, like you could see the more intensity of it, I guess, especially with like how um Captain Verse works and everything. You can see the very polar opposites of it. Of both sides, I guess you could say almost. Yeah. And even if we go into Genshin with um Nahida. Yeah, Nahida. Um, you do still see that she is still young and acts like it, but tries to be a strong adult and lead the whole nation. Yeah, because like with Genshin, at least, like you can see that especially where she's like very, she's she sees herself as very like you know how she, it is, but also like you can see it with like her relation with like uh, characters like um, Ohita and like even like Skatamish or the Wanderer, or whatever his whatever the name you gave him. You can see it how it is very different between those two characters and everything. And even with the other Archons, and it's like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> that is the most human way you can possibly present it. That is something that's also kind of unique. Yeah, kind of unique about Terry is, you know, you've, you've got the main storyline, right? And you've got a lot of focus on um, Tiana, on Mei, on Bronya, on Fuhua. But then... Teresa, she has a lot of good story, but she doesn't get as much spotlight. Yeah, she and that takes shines that through a lot more in her versions because she gets like two major Captain Verse versions, and then a whole bunch of extra appearances. She's like everywhere. <laughs> She's everywhere, but at the same time, she doesn't get that much of like a like a spotlight and everything, which yeah. is so sad considering the fact that they have so much potential with her yeah she's such a unique character in the series and she takes a bit of a backseat for the other characters which is a shame a lot of the time but when she gets that spotlight it's amazing what they do yeah yeah Am amazing and then you also remember what happened in the hod arc with her and who <laughs> and when they go to the school and everything <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> God, that 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 forever killed me. I remember when I first went through that. I was like, "There's no way this is gonna actually happen," and it did. And I remember I was just screaming about it with my friend in text. I was like, "They actually did it. They did it. They did it." In, in a big sense, huh? In, in in a big sense, she's also this sort of foundation for the main cast. She is, yeah. Like, yeah. She, she often gets a lot of the more down-to-earth moments, you could say. She's often seen, like, trying to keep things together. And I'm actually going to cry. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, it's just really touching and really human. It is really touching and human. That's what's yeah. really... I mean, like, with her, at least most of the experiences with her, in my opinion, are the most human. Even, like, when we go through, like, the Chronicle series and we're meeting about, like, her past and everything and we see it. Even when, like, all the way in does spoke when she's talking, like, she's having her conversations with Otto. It's just like, oh, God. <laughs> you, there's a lot of moments where you just have to stop for a second and go... Holy, how did they manage to make such a well-written character with so much, like, human emotion and human thought behind it? <laughs> yeah, 100%. The connection she has with different characters and how that goes into the story and impacts everything and how it impacts the player as well. It's done really, really well. It's like... Even, like, if a player just, like, sometimes slips... Because I've, I've seen it happen in my own, like, chats and everything. Where a player will go, like, Oh, right, Teresa, that's right. She's a, she's a, she's a, she's a headmaster. And I'm like, yeah. And they were like, yeah, I don't really remember much about her. And then they randomly, they go, like, Oh, I remember when Teresa did this thing in, like, this chapter. And we're like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's things like that where... I think it's the fact that for her, the impactful scene she has isn't, like... In my opinion, seeing as super impactful, but it's impactful because it's so human and so touching to the player. It makes the biggest effect that it can because it's not like put in this grand like light. It's just like she is there to make sure everyone in the cast is okay, but she also has her moments too. It's yeah, it's, it's kind of like she a lot of her, her amazing and well written scenes are uh, scenes where she is taking things in and scenes where she is finding things out. Yeah. Scenes where she is, like, directing the group where there is this a certain simplicity to it. Mm hmm But then the, like, big scenes that are mostly remembered are, like, the... Uh, Hershes, for instance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the oh, yeah. transformations, the big power boosts, the, the oh, um, you've activated my trap card, you know. <laughs> and Teresa rarely ever does that because Wait. she's not often in those scenes. Yeah. A lot of her big scenes are her doing sacrifices on herself for other people, really showing how she cares about others. Like when she let her Vishnu genes uh, consume herself rather than the dreams around. And um, yeah, giving herself up for the others and like going fighting the Hersher of the Void with her Godsbane battle suit, even though she knows she's outmatched. Like the the entire thing of her rebelling against Chicksaw. Oh that my god! The entire thing of like, oh, you took Kiana, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I I I remember going through that in the back of my head. I was like, oh god, oh god, please don't, please don't, please don't, because I was like, she's probably gonna be fine. But like in the back of my head, I was just like, oh god, oh god, she's technically, if anything, rebelling against like you know her grandpa. And my brain just went like, oh Jesus, oh jeez. <laughs> In the back yeah. of my head, I was more like, oh god, oh god, this is going to be bad, this is going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, face value, it just looks like a child rebelling, but then when you actually look into what's happening, she's going against this massive organization, which yeah. she's grown up in and has been a part of, and that's been that's her, her life. Home. Yeah, that's everything she's really known, really. Well, that's, she's done more, but you know what I mean. It's also something where... It's perhaps a bit unfortunate. A lot of people start playing Honkai and Back Third, and um, there's this idea of like, oh, you need to get to the end of Chapter 9, right? And that's where the turning point is. That's where it get in gets interesting. And then, like, oh, final lesson is here. Boom, we're in it. And yeah. scenes like Teresa rebelling... I don't think people don't realize. really yeah. hit the same because they don't know her. Because they haven't, like, sat down, looked at, like, the manga, looked at, like, the chronicle, and actually thought about the, like, position of the character in the story. Yeah. Her, really con her early content really suffers like that. She is in a lot of outside media and not in the main story a lot at the start, which causes issues for new players like you said that are rushing to get to where everyone says oh it gets great here and 
so on and so forth. On that note, a uh, fun little fact. When we were digging into the release history of like the characters of the early Guns Girls content, early Hong Kong Back Third content, um, we actually came across this um, sort of uncertainty of like, okay, where does Teresa first start, first appear? And ended up discovering that based on what we currently found, she doesn't actually originate from Guns Girls because she appeared in the Hong Kong Impact Third manga first and they used a cutout of her character from the manga colored in as a, a character sprite until they replaced it later. Really? In Guns Girls. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a piece of information I didn't even know. Holy nice. Yeah, so so uh, he's originally is the kind of like where Kiana and May is like from GGZ. Okay, okay, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So along with I think Sinmal, she's one of the like one of the few very early cast characters that went from Honkai Impact Third to Guns Girls instead of vice versa before Honkai Impact Third came out. How fun. Oh my god. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just here like, oh my god, wait, hold on a second. That's actually very fun. Oh my god. It was one of the early things that was connecting the games, bringing characters from uh, Impact Third into Gun Girls so that um, showing that it's not just them taking old assets, it's bringing new ones into it and bringing it all together. Mm. Goodness, uh, I'm oh, <laughs> screaming uh, about it. Sorry, <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just like processing the information because I'm like, I'm looking back at everything. We're like, wait a minute, hold on. I have to, I have to note everything down. I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't even know that. Wait, yeah. So, for the record, for people watching who may not be aware, the monochrome series, the like early Hong Kong Impact Third manga that were in black and white uh, started coming out about a year before the video game did and was heavily implied to be an alternate um, world line, an alternate timeline um, based on the same concepts as Guns Girls. Later this was confirmed by the authors and the, this is very noticeable in the early contents. Um, in fact, the some parts of Guns Girls were later rewritten to be a bit more like Honkai Impact Third, which is funny as heck. And a lot of the elements that Guns Girls and Honkai Impact Third share appeared in Honkai Impact Third first, like even after the monochrome manga. No, not all aspects, just a decent amount of them. Um, yeah. uh, uh, another example being Fuhua. <laughs> Something you'll hear online regarding Gun Girls is that it is separate, but that is very much not the case when you look at things like that rewrite and characters going backwards when they really wanted to connect them and draw the lines between the games to make them one franchise and you really see that i think that's what makes it so fun because like i i don't know how hoyo develops things they kind of just do things and we just kind of have to be like okay we have to watch all the videos and everything but like in the writer standpoint like as someone who wants to like polish like works of writing and stuff it kind of makes sense where you like have all these ideas and you're like oh shoot wait hold on this is actually better here or here and this and that you know so it's like okay you can see that, yes, they do plan things, but sometimes something like comes like into a realization of, wait, this would be so much more better. Never mind. Hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. She's she's great. <laughs> and this is just information. It's like, wow, <laughs> a character like Teresa can help us explain a little bit more and everything. Oh, yeah. Old Teddy Spray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, JK just sent um, yeah, the just... old Sprite <laughs> in uh, the Discord chat. <laughs> She's, ah, I love her. <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> oh, man. 
Uh, also a mm -hmm. oh, no, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say because <laughs> I was going to go on the complete non sequitur. So. Oh, I was going to be like, this. I love her too much. She's so precious to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Innocent child that isn't so innocent, or a child. Oh. <laughs> She's like yeah, a child I, I, to me. I want to protect. <laughs> like I, I believe what like one of the first one of the first things that is said when she appears is like Kiana going like who's this like who's this kid? Yeah. <laughs> What's with this kid? Like <laughs> who who is a sassy lost child? <laughs> Yeah, she basically went to one punch bad brute. <laughs> yeah, just like who is this? Who is this? What the heck? I oh my god. I don't know. I like I I under I, I know in my head I always tell myself I'm like, no, this is this is an adult in the set. But just like something in a part of me just goes like I have to I have to make sure. I have to make sure she is like safe at all times because like I don't know, ever since like, you know, we go through chronicle well those who go through chronicles. Like, I don't know, you realize how much stuff she went through and then like you go through the whole game and I I'm not gonna lie, okay. Uh slight spoilers for Dust Spoke. And Dust Spoke when she, you know, proceeds to go ahead and basically give us a little haha hee hee scary moment, I remembered I didn't want to play the game anymore. I wanted to drop and I was like, I swear to God, if they kill her, I ain't playing anymore. <laughs> I was ready to drop yeah, and I was like, nah. I I no, I was like, you can kill off anyone in the cast, but her, I ain't allowing it. I will leave. <laughs> I was so ready. I was so done. I was like, nope, 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 nope. So a little thing about the um appearance of Teresa in Guns Girls, right? Mm -hmm. Um so the time frame is really short. Like it she started appearing in Guns Girls very quickly after she appeared in the Honkai manga. Um, but regarding her full retro storyline, I'm not actually caught up. <laughs> well, me um, so <laughs> she she plays a major role in the retrospective storyline. She plays a major re role in the Reborn storyline. And I've seen she also appears in the new Honkai Academy storyline. Oh my so god. So she's definitely one of the most long-lasting characters. Can can um, we talk about the design, the new design for her? Because I okay. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I I love it so much. I love the color palette. I love the little like the headband piece and everything. Ah! <laughs> And I love the fact that they didn't go. Well, it's a, it's been a century now, so she she should she should be tall now. No, like, I'm I'm glad she's still small, Terry. I know. <laughs> I'm like I I know people are like, oh, she should look different because like it's old. No, Bob, this is great. Leave her alone. <laughs> the child I, genes cannot grow up. The child genes can never grow up. But you know what? That's not what's important here. It's the fact that that's just. What makes her Teddy to an extent? She has, in a sense, like embraced it, you know? Yeah. The mm -hmm. day they grow her up to Callan is the day that most people quit. Uh, probably. <laughs> or yeah, that, I, or I, the copium of we're going to get an actual Callan battle suit. <laughs> I, I hope that if she gets like a new version for like part two or post Hongai Odyssey and like she maybe uses that unleashed form, that it's just the burst mode, that it's not like a permanent new form that she has. Oh, yeah. Um, Wait. Just, Question. It would just change the character so much. <laughs> Question. Are we all caught up with the main story? Uh, no, but I spoiled myself, so. Act three of part two? Oh, yeah, that uh, like little flash. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that because I have the oh, image yeah. right I've here. Seen, I've seen. <laughs> I have I've seen, the. I've seen, I've played it. Can, can I put it in the chat? Can I put it in the chat? <laughs> Go on. May, thank you. Oh my god, I love the outfit. Also, yeah, so, so, I oh we, my god. We might have to like edit in those Terry yeah. designs or something <laughs> for the viewers because. <laughs> I I just. The, 
I, 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 I stay too focused on this design. I stay too focused, like analyzing this and everything, I'm noticing all the little symbolism here and there. And I, I died. I died. I died when I saw this. I on stream. I screamed so loud. I peaked my mic for the first time in a while. I, oh my god. <laughs> I was like, no way. My, oh, my precious baby. <laughs> Just, I I don't know. I'm very happy. Like, this gave me, like, okay. So, in part one, we saw the little moment, right? The little moment in part one in chapter, like, 35. This this made me go, like, okay. They're, 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 they're planning stuff with her. They're planning. They're waiting. They're just waiting now. Yeah. yeah the, and the fact that she didn't get uh, an arc in 1.5. Like I was convinced it was going to be I like was convinced Zilla too. arc, um, Fuha arc, and then Teresa arc. I w- I was a hundred percent convinced. I was like, she's gonna she's gonna get it. She's gonna get it. She's going to get her arc. I was like, this is where she gets her arc. This is where she gets her battle suit. This is where I will spend my money. She's going to get it. Yeah, it did seem like she was gonna get something, but that kind of went to Captain Verse and uh, Luna and uh, Kong Ming and all those Teresas there. I was, I was so, I wasn't mad. I was just very sad. I was like, I thought she would get it also in the main story. No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Pedro, part three. Oh my god! I was waiting. I was waiting. Like at the end, towards the end of part one point five, I was like, they're gonna drop it. They're gonna drop it. They're gonna give us like a little CG. They're gonna give us something like a little storyline. No, I, I, I remembered. I was just like, where is it? I miss. I must have missed something. There was an event that I that I probably skipped or something. Uh, this yeah. this design, like new design, has to be a <laughs> has to be something, right? It could yeah, have just have used any design yeah. from before. They so, do. and also, I think what's funny is the fact that it kind of looks like it, with the colors, at least with the GGZ design too, the new one. Oh yeah, you're right. They're the they're the same color palette. I was like, wait a minute, they're the black and white and the blues. I was like, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it's 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 something that they like to do a lot. Is these like more subtle design nods, kind of like how Kiana's um, Hersher Finality design not just references the Hersher Finality design we see in like um, previous era content. But also, like in color scheme, has more in common with, I believe it's Alaya, with oh, okay. a, an, another figure connected to Finality in um, Reborn GGZ, which is really cool. <laughs> but um, something uh, f- from earlier, you you mentioned uh, Kongming. We oh. haven't really talked about yeah. her much. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, yes. um, I I wish to say uh, something that I will forever think Hoyo did dirty when they did a rerun of the event. It was on my birthday, and I was so I was banging pots and pounds. I was like, "You did this on purpose!" <laughs> yeah, no happiness for you. No happiness Just here. No. That event oh. is so sad when you play through it. I think Anyone a lot of people who it, played it out. just. Data is like it's one of their favorite events. I know so many people that played it and they were like, this event is so good. I'm like, yeah, it is. Welcome to welcome to Honkai. <laughs> it's some the best Honkai media. That song, The Day You Vanished with the Stars, is also like one of Terry's oldest songs. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. It, it, it's it, in some sense, it's a bit unfortunate that people have come to associate it with Gong Ming so strongly that they kind of forget it's about Terry. <laughs> I yeah. Oh man, yeah. I've heard it first associated with Teddy. That's the thing. So for me, I was like, "Oh wait, hold on, pause." <laughs> hmm. So I was just like, "Oh okay, well I guess it's gonna be like this." Because like I do a little GGZ, like the basics. So I was like, "Okay, this is Teddy." And so when I heard it, I was like, "Wait a minute, pause, hold on." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, well it's fine." <laughs> hmm. Um. And then I I do kind of I kind of really hope that like characters like Kong Ming get another shot at more story. Especially yeah. Kong Ming, because for me at least the note we left her on was kind of bitter. 
Oh my god, it was bitter. Thank you for agreeing with me. I I was like, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel good. Please. Yeah, I like that ending scene. Have her go on adventures with Rosemary. Let her just be happy, please. She needs something. I that felt hope. so. Oh. Yeah. At least Luna got some happiness. Well, Luna got some happiness, but she was kind of stuck somewhere for a while, so that was fun. Yeah. And I think, like, for... I think Luna's story is pretty much wrapped up. Oh, yeah. Like, you could still do fun things with her. Like, I don't know, like, have her go shopping somewhere, and then, like, <laughs> it turns into this, like, a whole thing where she destroys, like, an entire... City Shopping or under. something because he gets in <laughs> trouble. Um, but it, it, I would be completely fine with like um, having the Captain Verse cast move on to stories without Captain and Luna. Honestly, Captain and yeah. Luna, are like, yeah, they have their happy ending now, and now like we can focus on like having a buddy cop story with Kong Ming and Rosemary where they um, become better friends. Uh, Something like that. Nice. Yeah, that would yeah, be that nice. Would be Wait good. a minute. Hold on. That would be cute too. I think there would be a lot of chaos, but also like fun, good moments too. And like they could explore so many possibilities. Maybe a way for us to get a new Calum Ballastu too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And since it is Sea of Quanta, it could show up in part two and mm -hmm. wouldn't be too much of a stretch and would be a good way to connect them and bring in this important character of part one of Teresa to the story and show the players who just went straight to part two how it all connects mm. it's oh they could do so much stuff the main question is how much stuff will they be willing to do oh man yeah that's there's, there's also the matter of just like time constraints and limitations like they want to tell new stories and I love that they're bringing in old characters that we we know that that's a thing that they do give like some more time to characters who haven't had it but there is the fact that like they only have so many writers only have so many events and chapters they can bring out yeah. uh, each there's patch only, there's only so much time which you can have a patch go for and so many things you can jam into it it's just yeah. not enough time unfortunately yeah, that's also why we like <laughs> we're stuck having to to cope for characters like Sin Mal to, to Oh my god! <laughs> it's like yeah, I, oh putting a character like that into the story at any given point can massively derail the narrative you're trying to tell. Don't worry, just Captain Verse it. It's fine. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Just just do a Captain Verse event. Yeah, just Boom. Show some of the versions. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that that's also why I think that while I would love to see characters like the Captain vs. cast making their way into part two or even part three, um, I do think they can be difficult to reconcile for a writer wanting to tell a specific story. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's hard to implement it if you want it to go a specific way because these characters are already written with their own histories and everything and you need to then work around it if you want to introduce them which is hard especially with developed characters like the Teresas. This like... is also why mm -hmm. I always think it's a bit silly when you see um like when talking about across the games like um we have a Terry and Guns Girls we have Nahida in, in Genshin, we're probably going to have one at some point in Star Rail, right? Oh my god, I wait. Always... You're right, that would happen. <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> I always think it's a bit silly when people say that that's lazy. That that's like, lazy. oh, they're just unoriginal, they're just copying old ideas for characters. It's like, no, the, these games are based on each other. They are taking these established concepts and exploring them in a new way giving them a new narrative and that's not an easy thing to do yeah because yeah, like no. i know with nahida um when nahida came out everyone's like oh she's just gonna be like teddy she's probably gonna be going through the whole thing about like you know the grandfather nah they 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 got people by the heart going like oh no she's going to be going through it 
I think her, I don't know what's the demo or the trailer or whatever. I don't know which ones are which. Um, but her animated video came out on her birthday. And it was about an endless samsara of a birthday. And it, it broke my heart. It made me cry. That was oh. so oh. sad. Yeah. Samsaras. Thanks <laughs> for bringing it up. I almost <laughs> forgot samsaras. I, 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 meant, I was going to say an endless loop. I was like, no, I have to mention the word samsara and see if it triggers it. Oh, my God. Yeah. We're going to have to talk about Terry and samsaras. Oh, we got to talk about the samsaras this poor girl has been through. <laughs> oh man oh man 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 she's she's been through it mm-hmm. well, and, like sakura samsara and mm-hmm. gratitude arc one of the weird weird things there is um if you look at their release times they were around the same time when they came out and this trips people up because like what? How are you supposed to reconcile those two? I think uh, I know for right now they recently changed it so the Sakura Samsara can only be available at level fifty. I'm gonna say this. I think that's a good choice. <laughs> that's one big thing I think I, they made that was like okay, good because every time I don't know about if you guys get questions about it or not, but I know for me I get questions about it where people are like, can you explain what the heck Sakura Samsara is about? And then they find the manga and they're like, can you explain what's going on with the manga? I'm like, oh god. Um, how do I explain this to you in simple terms? Because I know as it's new players, I'm like, oh shoot. Mm. I I am at a loss of words here. <laughs> oh man. I've just personally never seen that. It just really had to explain why it's canon. Yeah, explain canon and non-canon things, and also how it relates to the canon, especially to new players. It's like, oh man, we're gonna we're gonna be here a while. I hope you're ready. <laughs> it's uh, it's not the fact that it's complicated. It's the fact that there's a lot of information behind everything. And also, bonus fact regarding the um, Sakura stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, she also has that like storyline, but it's we don't really have it complete. It seems in um, Guns Girls, we love where it. she does also have this interaction with the Ice Sakura, and she does also have the Fox form. But we're having trouble piecing things together because there is a lot of lost media there. Yeah, Sakura After Image as a whole, which is. Um, their Gratitude Arc version, which sequel to Sakura Memories, which is the manga. Um, it's very interesting because it brings in these mangas and things from HI3 into Guns Girls and adds more on top of it and shows a different way of how it could have gone and different ways the relationships could have developed and lots of different things it oh man it's it's crazy and jk is definitely more familiar with that part than i am um i think you did like the scene building for the um look ahead mode in operation gecko for those parts right yeah i went all in depth with researching it and finding how it connected and what's what for what and what's hi3 what's ggz where does it cross over and i ended up creating the scenes for operation geku like um you said there which for those who don't know is uh, our gun girl z visual novel adaptation which we are making um that's currently uh, in the retro um, storyline and is approaching the end of it. Yeah, we're, we're like with the look ahead mode, at least we're getting decently close. I think there's only two more major arcs. Uh, for the retranslation, we're way behind. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, Everything about, takes time. About a. Mm-hmm. T- chapter 10 there which interestingly is when teresa is first introduced into 
uh, Gun Girl Z, which she appears when uh, she contacts uh, Himiko when they capture uh, the main cast and they all have a fight and all that goes down. Which that main part is the main bit where the stories do diverge, where you have um, Gun Girls and HI3, where HI3 goes off and the whole monochrome manga happens. Whereas in Gun Girls, they spend much more time in Nagazora and do more things there. Yeah, like that divergence, that's also something where um, there's a lot of misconceptions regarding the relationship between the games. Because uh, as we talked about a bit before, it's an alternate timeline, um, like a different world in the uh, overarching universe. And a lot of people think that the monochrome manga is actually just a Guns Girls manga, like within that continuity. But that doesn't add up because the like scenes where they meet Himiko and meet Teresa are in Guns Girls. And it's a different scene. Like <laughs> the first meeting between those characters is just different altogether. Um, but then it gets confusing again because the uh, author likes to bring up the Honkai Impact Third manga to like recontextualize some scenes to go like, oh, like this also happened in Guns Girls um, and this also happened in Guns Girls and we're going to ignore the other part. Yeah, instead of rewriting it with many things similar and getting to the same outcome they just chuck the thing in there and say that's what it is and if something doesn't fit well it doesn't fit because it's a different storyline also a bit earlier i quickly checked the podcast rules uh -huh. to make sure that we're allowed to talk about character pairings because I'm I... going to bring up something that is I... only oh, going Lord. to melt the brains of a lot of people. All right, let's do this. What are we bringing up? I was like, hold on, okay. we're going to see how this goes, in... shall we? <laughs> yeah, I believe it's in 2017, could be 2019. Um, might be mixing up the years here. There was a sort of, I believe, web event. And... Um, uh, Chibi uh, actually made a Twitter post about this. I know which one you're talking about now. I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's <laughs> one of the funniest things about it is it um, brings up um, essentially character pairings because yes. it's the singles day. It's like the counterpart to Valentine's Day. Uh, and it has this like, oh, there's two camps. You have Himiko in um, a suit. Uh, like, oh, she didn't have luck with men, so now she's flirting with women. And then you have Otto in a dress. So it's like, oh, Colin had no interest in men, so now he dresses up as a woman. <laughs> God. And it features these, like, islands that each have a character pairing, mm -hmm. which is the closest, probably the closest other than, like, having Bronya and Silicus that Mihoya Mihoyo ever really gets to confirming pairings for Honkai Impact Third? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> and the the, the funniest thing there is that Yai Sakura is paired up with two characters because it's Colin and <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> oh my and god! The canonical kissing scenes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and like, it's. I'm, I'm so sure that like would melt a brain of so many people to find that out. Let me let me get the <laughs> images out so I can put it in the chat because like I remember when I saw it, I was like, pause, hold on. Am I seeing correctly? I don't think I'm seeing correctly. Cause I legitimately was like, I don't think I am. I don't think I'm seeing this post correctly. Hold on. Yeah. My goodness. Hold on, I'm looking for it. I'm so sorry. I should have bookmarked this. We'll do that. <laughs> I remember when Chibi posted it, I was it was like two in the morning for me, and I was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna get up for some water." And I was like, "Wait a minute, pause." 
am I am I seeing things correctly? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so funny how things like that were like a little like events like that were like a little more like a fun little thing Hoyo did. And now I'm sure if Hoyo did something like that, it would be like wildfire spreading all over the internet. Oh yeah, and like now that Twitter would explode. Oh man. I oh my goodness. I do know, like, um, at least with Star Rail and, like, uh, the Kenshin. Why did that name slip my head? Um, they do do, the like, the Valentine's Day art and then the white they are, you know? Because mm. yeah. uh, I know I was excited for both days. So I was like, all right, drop the art of who the characters are going to be this year. <laughs> yeah. So with, like, that um, out of the way, um, oh my gosh. We can basically now acknowledge the anniversary of Mihoyo's gayest game. Um, the elder sister to Honkai Impact Third, uh, Guns Girl Z, <laughs> which has been going for 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Jesus. Tw- uh, 24. 2014. Jesus. And yeah. we have to remake the whole thing. <laughs> And then also, ho- and also, funny enough, shares the same birthday with our very special overseer now. Ah! <laughs> very it intentional. It was funny because I d- it it didn't dawn on me. I was like, oh yeah, you know, the both are so two things are happening on the twenty eighth, and then it was before we started. I was, it was just like the little like, oh yeah, GGZ is on the twenty eighth. I was like, wait, pause, hold on. It, like yeah, I also dawned. didn't put I also didn't put two and two together like until now, and I've been like researching guns goes for the better part of like what two years three years yeah. it's it's just and, so you know, funny it's, <laughs> the, the, it's cuz i guess like because like in our heads we sort of separate them by like you know they're different series and stuff and now it's like well wait they share like the same major date the 28th of march <laughs> yeah i think it's kind of the thing where you can watch any of these games through a specific lens, right? You can look at Star Rail, you can look at Genshin, you can look at Honkai and Back Third, and you can view it through the lens of a standalone game mm-hmm. with its own story and its own like things going on, and that works completely. I think they did that fairly well. Um, maybe not as well at the start of Honkai and Back Third, but they really picked up after that. They managed to figure that out. And it is a strong standalone experience. You don't need to you don't need the other games to enjoy them. But that other lens is still there where you can view them as like these parts of a bigger whole where there's just so much between them that gives an extra level of flavor, an extra level of depth to everything. I think that's a really cool and beautiful thing that Mihoyo has done in these past 10 years. <laughs> like, that's 10 years is a sizable number, especially for a gacha game. It is. Where a lot of them, like, die within a year. I mean, as someone who plays gacha games because I just need something sometimes on my phone to do. <laughs> It's it's so funny to see how much Hoyo will actively try to make sure their games stay alive. I mean, I even play Tears of Themis. No one really talks about Tears of Themis online, but they they really do know how to make sure everyone in every game is like pretty satisfied with everything, in my opinion. Yeah, they definitely look at how things are individually and together, and together is more of just enhancing it and bringing it together and oh this makes sense oh that lines up oh finality oh they're the same character they're the same trope it all lines up but they are good stories individually and they work amazingly on their own yeah like i know this is kind of related i guess but like for tears of them is even them just throwing in a homo shook me i was like wait hold on is that is that a homo? <laughs> oh, it's just canon. I guess oh it's God, canon. Homo. 
Wait, did you know that? Tears of Themis had a thing with homos and everything? That's yeah. Hearing, okay. But... I was like, I just need to make sure people oh, knew. You, you, you didn't know, JK. It's, oh, hold it's on. Like let me one get of it. the biggest like, tie ins Tears of Themis has to anything else, Mihoyo. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I. Oh my God. I remember I saw it. I was freaking screaming. I was like, no way. <laughs> I haven't played Tears of Themis, but it sounds like such a passion project that they just... I, I love Tears with. of Themis. I, I, I love it. I believe there was an interview. I think it I think it was with David Jung. I'm not sure. Um, there was an interview with uh, a developer from Mihoyo who basically described Tears of Themis as more of an art project. Really? Yeah, huh, I didn't where, really know that. Like, they I... were making comparisons about like, oh, um, we've got these like big AAA experiences with like Genshin and Honkai, where we really try to push our technology, where we really try to draw in a big audience and um, really give people a spectacle. Mm-hmm. And then um, they brought up Tears of Temis as like, but we also want to do like more of these like smaller art projects. I think that was really cool to read. Huh. If when, when you start reading these interviews with the developers, with like these people, it becomes clear just how Passionate? much they love their work. Yeah. And that it's not about the bottom line, that it's not about the money. Of course, it's there. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I mean... It's, I mean, it, for it's me, definitely there. <laughs> I mean, for me, I got into Tears of Themis because um, Ardman's uh, CN voice actor. Because I was like, wait a minute, pause, hold on. I'm intrigued. What are you doing in this project? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need to know what they're what they're doing in the background because I was like, what the heck? What are you? Because okay, in case you don't notice, his scene voice actor uh, shares with um, Ayato and Otto. So I was like, "Hold on, that is a very different role than what you got to do here." Pause. Or <laughs> shadowing. Like for shadow. Oh, wait, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> you got to play as a lawyer who's like, who's just got to be doing his job and is tired. Okay, not really tired, but you know, overworked. <laughs> <laughs> Honkai Impact Part 3 is just going to be like a um An Atomi game. Uh, <laughs> protagonist having to like navigate relationships with like <laughs> Otto and Welt. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Oh no. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna be myself. Oh my god. And if you have to navigate relationships with Otto, that means you can also spoil Terry and call her your <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> Can't do this. I don't no. think Terry would like that though. <laughs> oh, that's quiet. That's wild. Crazy timeline there. You know, they could do that for an April Fools. They could do that for an April Fools if they wanted to. April Fools. It's a, it's a Tears of Themis DLC. <laughs> oh no. Mm. Oh, crazy. Uh, we're getting close to an hour. So before we start any like closing off. Um, just wanted to ask, is there anything else you really wanted to mention or talk about regarding either Theresa Apocalypse or Guns Girls? JK? Um, like I mentioned before, our projects with Operation Gecko, we're going and recreating the game because they killed it in English and they translate really badly so we're redoing everything meaning that you can experience it and in a new way we're restaging everything giving new backgrounds even new sprites new everything really but restoring the story for the main audience new experience for those who didn't get the chance to or those who did because there are people who played it but sadly had to say bye to the old servers yeah yeah oh man yeah I'm, Unfortunately, i hope that so. that project can rekindle a bit of the interest in guns girls for the global audience and really help people explore a bit more of like 
a side of miHoYo's games that is generally not as well known. Um, but we do need more hands, so if people like want to have a try at translating Chinese, either using tools or using their own knowledge, or like just helping us check up on the grammar <laughs> that we, we we've like not changed the tense in the middle of the sentence or something. Yeah, um, extra hands are always welcome, so um, do let us know. <laughs> um, I got, um, I got one thing to say. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I, I am, I, I have been, I have been begging, and I'm still gonna continue to beg every day for an overseer to do battle suit. I have been putting this on every single like end of patch form for a consecutive couple of uh since Dust Book Apocalypse finished. That's about like what two years now, right? Oof. I've been putting it at the end of every four where I give them like, oh, you know, here's some bugs, here's some things here and there. And I always put at the very end, please give us a titty so over your battle suit. Please. I always put it every single patch, every single patch. Even when Luna came, I was like, please, I'm, I am holding out. I am holding out for them to do it. I am begging. <laughs> Even if it's just <laughs> Teresa's head or not his body. Oh my God. <laughs> The fact that it's been so long since um, the Colossus arc just freaks me out a bit because it feels it, like yes. so. It feels like it was so recent. So I know. I felt that because, like, for me, I, I, it's it was two years ago when it ended, and I remember two years ago it was when I was like still like it's, I I I I still consider me fairly new in the content scene. I'm like, what? Two years ago, I stood up at 2 a.m. finishing Dust Spoke and crying in my bed on stream? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. You're telling me That's I cried for a long. solid 45 minutes in bed and came back pretending to be fine? <laughs> God. Yeah, it's unreal. God. Yeah, two years. It actually is about two years ago, even. Because it happened like in February, I believe. Yeah, that's when Dust Spoke like officially came out, and like February ish. Yeah. Oh my was god. Was that 2021 or 2022? 2022, I believe. Because in 2021, November is when I started streaming, and that's when Dust Spoke was slowly coming out. All right. So for me, I'm like, I remember these dates because one, I have the DMs of me and my me going to my friend going like, all right, I got the guts. Please come on here so I can play this and you can experience. Uh, we both screamed at each other. Because <laughs> <laughs> God, God. And I still remember that little scare they gave us with Teddy. I remember what I said, if they if they if they kill her, I'm I'm dropping this game. <laughs> I'm going to do Terry it. Bring Terry to Mars. Bring Terry to Mars. I'm pretty sure she will show up. My my hope is the fact that the cast is like, oh, we need a little bit more help. Who can we ask for help that could probably help us? Oh, wait. The Overseer. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted wait, to be like that. Wait, gone through all of this and is an old adult. Who, who has experience in this and who has worked with Valkyries and all sorts of unusual events that no human being probably goes through in their normal lifetime? Oh, wait! And also, we need a scene with Teresa and Coralie. Oh, I, yes. I know Coralie will give her a time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you she would. I mean, clearly is even the kind of person who regularly says, like, oh, um, like, our personalities aren't allowed to be too similar. Uh, oh, our characters aren't allowed to be too similar. I need to be special. Yeah. You can tell, like, oh, she paints her nails, gets the uh, ear spikes. She tries to express herself a lot. Yeah. And then having Terry be there is, like, such cool. potential for going, like, yeah, I'm supposed to be the only one that doesn't age. <laughs> I think it would be even funnier because imagine just like just Teddy makes a simple comment. Corley would probably be quick to be like, no, 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 no. There's got to be a difference. There's got to be a simple, clear difference here. Drawing the line <laughs> in the sand and everything. Going like, nope. I got to I got to make sure I stand out for this. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just realized something. Teddy, Teddy likes manga and all that, right? Well, at least like they mention that a lot, especially in the older like 
series, like the older parts of the game and manga, right? Yeah. One of our dorm mentions it. Yeah. Imagine just like Teddy mentions that by passing and Coralie just goes like, God dang it. <laughs> I gotta do something. <laughs> I oh Are my we god! Have a second entry entropy. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's funny because like I, I'm thinking about this now. I'm like, oh, there would be so much cha- good chaos between the two, especially because I believe recently uh, there was a simple comment made towards Corley of being looking like a child. It's just like, hold on, <laughs> the way she reacted to it. I'm like, that that reminds me of a certain someone at least in my head. These characters are so well established that the din- dynamics just write themselves. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah. Um. Unfortunately, is I'm loving this conversation, but unfortunately, what? that's probably all we have time for today. You know what? We need to have a conversation later on when we get more chapters on like Coralie and the absolute chaos she could probably cause with everyone if needed. I need mm. to see her react to the main cast from part one and just like the cast coming up in part two. I think it would be so funny. Let the meet mm. already, Harrier. <laughs> Before we leave our dearest listeners, um, one more final, uh, is it an introduction? It's outroduction? Outro- an outro outro for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Outroduction, go on, Out- man. No, let's just take it out. <laughs> outroduction. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, outroduction. Uh, final outroduction for everyone. Um, where can we find you? Where can we find your stuff? Um, not like your possessions to steal, but like your work, the things you put out. Uh, starting with JK. Um, you can find me on most platforms at JK Crafted and on Twitter it's Crafted JK because it refuses to give me JK Crafted for some reason. Oh my gosh. Um, and my work can also be found on different Hoyo Stands projects and the sites and just generally around there. Look for my name, you'll probably find it somewhere. Right? No? Um, you can find me on Norin T on Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, YouTube, uh, Tumblr. It's a different username. It's on Thursday because I just scream on there. Uh, but you can find me basically anywhere. I'm constantly posting, constantly sharing art, constantly answering questions, especially on my Twitch. Uh, I am going to forewarn though. I do scream a lot about favorite characters and little things that they do between the games and stuff. <laughs> All right. And Mr. I'm Mr. Spaceman. You can find most of what I do on hoyostance.be or on the Twitter hoyostance at HonkaiCat. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a, a wrap, I guess. Uh, um, right. Uh, before I forget, the most important part. Um, yeah, it is. We'll catch you next time on Captain on the Bridge podcast. Oh, and let's fight for all that's beautiful in the world. <laughs>